summer 2023 had some anime heavy hitters, both returning and new ones. Autumn 2023 bangers might be slightly smaller in scale, but that doesn't mean we're in for a disappointing anime season altogether. This video is going to be pretty informative with my added takes, so if you're not interested in an anime I'm currently talking about, I advise you skip along the video. There's timestamps in the description. Look out for a symbol next to some of the titles. They either mean I think it's going to be really good or I'm personally really looking forward to the show. Let's get down to it. Of the returning anime, Spy X Family, Tokyo Revengers and Dr. Stone are your big show and jump titles for the season. You also have Goblin Slayer, The Rising of Shield Hero and Eminence of Shadow as your well-known seinen shows. I'm going to start with Tokyo Revengers. So far I've been satisfied with the anime. Not perfect, but it's definitely not bad. You'll see more of the same. Takemichi crying while he's getting jumped, Takemichi crying after he gets jumped and Takemichi crying at the midst of sorting out the problem. You get my point, he cries a lot so be prepared for that. The Tenjuku arc is widely regarded as the best one in the manga so anime only are in for a treat. If you're a fan of Mikey, he's more involved in the story this time around. You get to see him and Draken hound out more L's though, not as much as Draken did in his one man army outing last season. That's still a wild moment to me. Looking at the trailers, the animation hasn't taken a dip in quality. Season 2 only came out winter last year, so don't expect a massive improvement either. Still, be on the lookout for it. Next, we have Spy X Family. I've got to be honest, I haven't watched all of the second part of the last season, but I read the manga up to volume 11, which should be well past the end of season 2 part 1. What I will say is that I enjoyed what I watched, personally don't have anything bad to say about it and I'm well aware that I'm procrastinating on seeing some good visuals. Also worth noting that the movie Spy X Family Code White will be out in theatres only in Japan just before Christmas and available to the rest of the world likely sometime in January to follow up on the show's episodes. Though it's not canon, it still means you'll be seeing the Forger family a lot for the next 6-8 to eight months. Easy pick for family friendly viewers. Next up we have Rising of Shield Hero. Now I know what you're thinking, solid first season or at least greatest hook in the first episode to lock you in for the rest of the season. Season 2? Kinda stunk as shit. Still, I'm looking forward to what season 3 brings. That overarching plot and mystery as to why the heroes needed to be summoned is enough to bring me back. And I'm hoping that this along with ReZero and Mushiku Tensei can break that recent Isekai anime curse of never seeing the story to the end. Though I know that's a big wish considering Shield Hero and ReZero light novels are yet to finish. Last of the returning anime that I definitely did not forget to include until doing this recording is Attack on Titan. Poor anime only fans, you guys have been starving for this final episode. As you all know, constant production problems have plagued this series but against the odds we will finally see the ending of this series in anime format. I personally can't wait to see the reactionary outrage that's due to come after the episode lands. So as said before it's not just the returning anime to be excited for this season, it's the new anime that you should be looking forward to as well. I stalled on reading this manga for a while until recently but Undead Unluck is almost up there with Chainsaw Man levels of weird. The story starts off with a girl called Izumo standing on the ledge of a bridge over train tracks due to do the S word now that her favourite manga is ended. Not gonna lie, I get half of that sentiment. That moment after you've just soaked it all in and you're just like, now what the fuck do I do? But not any of that other stuff. At the same time, I don't have to deal with the fact that everything bad happens to those who touch me like she does. After she scares the crowd of people trying to help her with a knife in hand, some guy also on the ledge literally walks into the blade and then grabs her. Shortly after the ground beneath him collapses and BAM! He gets hit by an oncoming train, body parts scattered everywhere. Izumo then hears his lone head laughing in the distance and on some Deadpool antics, he just heals himself back up, shamelessly butt naked thing dangling in front of her. That's when he reveals he's undead who also wishes to end himself. As the unlikely duo band together they have to fend off attacks from various groups of people who are after them for their abilities. It's looking very promising with what's been seen in trailers and that's no surprise when you know that Studio David Productions aka the Jojo Studio are man in this one. I actually don't know who nicknamed it that but you catch my drift. If they've given it the Jojo treatment throughout the show and not just showed us the best bits in the trailer then this could compete with Heavenly Delusion and Oshinoko for the best new anime for the the year. Ragnar Crimson might be the action fantasy you're looking for. In a world plagued by dragons, over a period of time a group among humans started to emerge called Dragon Hunters. Ragnar is a weak and talentless dragon hunter, whereas his companion Leo is the strongest of dragon hunters. For a while now they live rather peacefully due to Leo being able to deal with any dragon threat that they face. In the midst of an attack, Ragnar meets his future self who lost everything to dragons. This future Ragnar bestows all the power that he gained through decades of fighting and earned him the title Reaper of Dragons. 
dragons. The current Ragnar then goes on a quest to slay all the dragons to prevent experiencing the loss that his future self dealt with. Along his journey, Ragnar meets Crimson, who he allies himself with, but it's known to us that this person is not to be considered a friend. I don't want to spoil any more for you, but if it's up your alley, look forward to an hour-long premiere episode on the 30th of September. Next up, we have Freerim Beyond Journey's End, or Solson no Freerim. It's another fantasy, but more slow-paced. I'll get right into the synopsis. After a group of adventurers defeat the Demon King, peace is restored to the world. They all reminisce over their 10-year quest before parting ways. Freerim, an elven mage, sees her companions pass away one by one. As she lives a lot longer than humans, a couple of decades of but a passing experience to her. This story takes place over a long period of time, littered with flashbacks of familiar characters she's interacted with in the past. Freerun is at a disconnect with those around her as naturally they have a shorter lifespan than her. After she's been asked to take in her companion's adopted niece, she goes on a journey to reinforce what little memories she has of her comrades before she forgets them all together. To me, this is a cool concept. The manga has a big following, so it gained a lot of hype when the anime got announced, and it helps that it looks so good. The person that was behind Bochi the Rock, Kei Chiro Saito, is also behind this with the support of Studio Madhouse. It may sound like I've said a lot about the story already, but considering that the show's episode is two hours long, you'll be up to speed with what's already been said. Highly recommend this one if you're after a slow burn of fantasy show. Next show, we got Ron Kamonohashi, Deranged Detective. Mystery isn't the primary category that I look for in manga anime, but after reading the first chapter, I just kept reading and reading. I can see why fans were raving about this. Ron is an eccentric genius paired with green, unskilled Totem Ishiki. He turned to being a shut-in after his license got revoked due to being in an incident that he has no memory of. Initially, he flat out refuses Totomaru's request for help, but as soon as he hears the details of the murder case, he accepts. With his wild deductions, he almost instantly solves the case that's been ongoing for months. The duo continue throughout the series with Ron solving the cases and Totomaru taking the credit, but improving over time. The reason Ron obliges to such a dynamic is related to the same incident that led to him becoming a shut-in. If you like Death Note, most recently Undead Murder Farce or any other cat and mouse story then you'll like this. The mangaka Akira Amano also created Hitman Reborn and the director for this show Shota Ihata has done a lot of work so it's safe to say it's in good hands. On to the last two. 16-bit sensation another layer. Despite what I'm about to say about the story this is quite wholesome. Set in 1992 a uni student is struggling as a part-time worker for a company. This is because the computer shop she applied for is also an erotic game developer and she's not used to drawing R-rated pictures. However she sticks around because the workplace really really needs an extra pair of hands. Hey, I like my action and suspense, but I also like something that I can turn my brain off to. If you're into sane and slice of life and experience references going back uh, over 30 years, well, give it a watch. If it's not your thing, skip it. The last one I'm gonna throw in is Bokura no Omeiro Protocol. I was head thoughts, let me know in the comment section down below. Roll safe.